Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and we're gonna paint this dragonfly field painting tonight. It's really fun, it's really quick and easy. You'll be surprised how quickly it goes. It's pretty basic. We don't need to trace a design on, we're gonna freehand it. Um, so it's very simple. So thank you guys for watching here tonight. Um, when you come on, you might see a little uh, notification from StreamYard, and if you accept, I will be able to see who you are. I will um, bring the chat up and you're welcome to ask me questions as we go along all night. But in order to see your name, I will need you to give permission to stream yet when we start. So let me take down that banner so it's not in your way. And I'm gonna open up the comments. So let me know when you're here. I'd love to know where you're watching from. If you're gonna paint along with me tonight or you're gonna watch this video and then paint later. Hey, welcome you guys. Thanks for coming on. Um, the video will will live here afterwards on the pages. I will also um, I can also email it out to you. But if you look on the in the discussion on the pages, you'll find that find the um, video. And you, if you also look under the video tab in the media section, and I also upload them to YouTube. So follow me on YouTube, Tinker's Card Art, and you will see a lot of uh, free classes there as well. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for colors. Pretty basic. I'm using primaries, really. Let me switch this over so you can see. Not me, but what we're painting. And so I've got um, black and white, of course. A primary blue. Could be ultramarine or, or marine or a primary. I have a phthalo green. It's a nice dark blue green, but uh, whatever your darkest green is that you have, cad yellow, primary yellow, primary red, and we're going to mix up the colors that we need. If you have a purple that you love, you can use it or any color for your flowers. I'm going to mix my colors there, but as I always stress to you guys, do not worry um, about doing exactly like my painting. You want to make it your own. You want to change the colors up, the flowers up if you like. I'll show you the techniques, but I want you to take it and run with it and do something um, that's yours. If I paint it, when I paint mine tonight, it's not going to look exactly like this. So I don't want to hear, oh, it doesn't look like yours. It doesn't look like Mary's. It doesn't look like it doesn't. It's not supposed to. It's yours. And mine is not even going to look like mine when I'm done later on. So, hey, say hello in the comments so that I know that um, I can see them. Like I said, feel free to... Um, Pop in if you have any questions, if you want me to slow down or speed up. But remember that you always have this to come back to. So if you are not keeping up or you just want to watch tonight, that's a great way to do it the first time is watch what I'm doing. You can always come back and paint it again. So I showed you the colors, just acrylic paints. You can use your tube acrylics. You can use your craft acrylics. Um, whatever you have for water-based acrylic paints will work. Hey, Kit, I'm glad you're watching. Hey, nice to see you guys. Hi, Nia. Hi, Janice from Michigan. Thanks for joining again. So that's what we got for paints. Pretty simple supplies tonight. I have a variety of brushes. I'll kind of show you what I'm using as I go along. What we're going to do first and what I do most times when I paint is I work background to foreground. We'll do our sky. We'll put our grasses in. We'll go up and we'll do our little dragonfly so that when we do our flowers, we're not putting our hand in the wet paint. And it's as easy as that. Hi, Denise. Hi, Zena. Nice to see you guys. Hi, Darlene, my neighbor over in Lemonster. Okay, so I am going to um, set this aside. I've got a littler canvas. This one was a big 16 by 20. I'm painting a smaller one because it's easier for you to see on camera. And sometimes it's easier to find a place on the wall for these little ones. You could, put, you could paint on a mixed media pad or a canvas panel or a canvas pad um, if you want to. The media, mixed media pads are great to um, do your classes and, your, and, and you know make sketches and have a nice book of reference. It's a little different painting on the canvas. I do find the mixed media pad, it dries a little faster, so sometimes you're not able to blend as well, but it's great for technique and practice. Okay, now I am going to, I do have a piece of chalk here tonight. And I'm going to sketch just a line for my horizon um, with a pencil. Sometimes I just do it with a paintbrush. But I'm just going to sketch a little, a, a little line here. It's a little above halfway. I, I don't often want to cut my painting right off half. I went up, cut, you know, I, I figured out where half was and just went up a little. The chalk's going to come in handy later when the background is painted and we want to just sketch on where our dragonflies go. Sometimes I just take a paintbrush with a little white paint and do my sketch with that as well. So if you have chalk, great. If you don't, 
fine. You can even sketch it with a pencil if you if you find the need to sketch it. Okay, I do my backgrounds um, in my skies very similarly a lot of times. So um, you guys who have watched me before, this will look pretty familiar to you. This is a pretty simple sky. We don't really even have clouds in there. I wouldn't really paint clouds in this one because I want these little dragonflies to really show up. And if they were in front of a bright white cloud, they would get a little lost in the shuffle. You can see I have lights and darks though. And I do that just as I'm going along and I'll show you, I put lights and darks in as I go. I paint fairly quickly and that's so that you can, um, so that the paint will blend for you. If you work pretty quickly from one side to the other, you can get a nice blend without even trying with your paints. Um, so we're gonna hop in. It might, my, my, this looks a little fuzzy, foggy to me on, on my end. I don't know if it looks that way on your end. I'm wondering if it's just my camera lens. So I'm just gonna give it a little wipe in case. In case that's the, the issue. And it apparently was, because it's not all smudgy now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use a bigger brush. You can use a two-inch chip brush if you have them. These are fun, great, cheap, cheap, cheap brushes. You get them from um, the craft sh shops, but you get them at the dollar store, too, or Abishans, or a hardware store. If you haven't that, and you have just like a synthetic two-inch or one-inch, three-quarter-inch brush, you can use that. And I always go on about, and you probably heard me a thousand times, I do like the white bristle brushes. Um, it is an oil painting or an acrylic painting brush where you'll find it more in the fine art section of the of the art stores. It is a bright, which um, means the long handle. And it's a filbert, which is like a rounded edge. I like these stiff, stiff brushes when I'm on canvas, especially for backgrounds, because I can dig right into that canvas with the bristles and it gets all the nooks and crannies. I don't paint my background and then find lots of little white spots left. You have to work a little harder with your synthetics, but it still works fine, just kind of press it in. So I'm not too concerned with using the brushes that I use. I tell you what I'm using and why, but whatever works for you and whatever brushes you have around are fine. I'm going to go in and how I do my skies many, many times is I just take a little bit of my blue and I go right into my white. I'm not going to mix a light blue on my palette and have it all nice and even. I want it to be really kind of not blended, a little light and dark. I really don't know exactly what it's going to look like on the canvas. And if you don't want a surprise, you could just do what I do. Just paint your edges first. And then you're going to see, oh, that's a little too dark or it's too light, and you just adjust on the fly. If it's a little too dark, just add some white right on your brush as you go. And the edges, it doesn't really matter on, but uh, it's a good place to practice to see what, what sort of a shade you get. I do paint the edges of these canvas. This, um, they're a gallery wrapped canvas, which means they don't have the staples on the side, they're stapled in the back. So it is convenient because if you don't wanna frame it, you could hang it right up on the wall like this. But of course, you're still able to frame it. But since I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do, I just paint my edge as I go. So that's very quick and easy, just the edge painted. Like I mentioned, I'm going to go probably from left to right. And the reason being, I'm going to just go into my paint again. I take a little blue, a little white. I, I don't really mix it too much till I get on my canvas. And can you see how I'm using sort of an X-y kind of a stroke? I do that for a couple of reasons. I like the way it gives some lights and darks and motion in brush strokes. I, I like to paint with brush strokes um, so you can see the brush strokes and it's a little bit more impressionistic sometimes. Um, but sometimes the acrylic paints are very transparent and you can see through them. So if you can do this sort of a texture and you have light areas that you're seeing through, it kind of blends and almost looks like that's what you wanted it to do. So I am going to work from this side over and you will see you have a good amount of time to blend. So as I'm going, sometimes I go just directly into that dark blue, right into my paint and you can see wet and wet, it's blending almost by itself. I wanna have some darks and some light areas. Sometimes I'll go just into the white, get a lighter area. I'm blending a little bit with my brush as I go. I don't blend it too much because I want that variation of lights and darks. But if you want a nice solid blue background, and you might for some paintings, you don't want that light and dark, you want just a solid color, you can get it with mixing your paints like this as well. You just keep blending. So instead of moving over like I am fairly quickly, you stay in one spot and you blend it and you could get that perfectly smooth if you like. I'm going to 
continue on though and use darks and lights because I like the way that looks. Because sometimes just these little areas could sort of be a light cloud in the background. It doesn't, I don't want to put big white clouds, but you might want something that looks like vaguely like a cloud off in the background. So you can see I'm applying the paint. I think I will go and just make my line here first, just so I have a place to butt up against. But I'm not spending too much time in one spot. I'm painting it. I'm giving it a quick once over to make sure I don't have any little white spots showing. And I just work my way right across. And remember, this is just acrylic paint. It's not, it's not um, you know, the end of the world if it's not the way you want it. You could paint right over it. If there's something you don't like and it's not dry, you could wipe it off. So don't feel too pressured to get it perfect. It it doesn't want you don't want it perfect to begin with anyway, because if it was perfect, you would probably have a photograph of it. And and we have lots of photographs. We need paintings, not photographs. So I'm just doing what I show you, some darks and some lights all the way over. So easy. Sometimes your paint will dry a little faster than others. Um, if it's not drying and you need to go over it, I do keep a heat gun or a hair dryer handy. You can give it a little zap as you go if you need to have it dried underneath. But I would almost rather have it take a little too long to dry and that gives me time to blend um, what I need to. It's pretty interesting when I'm painting like this on camera because if I look at my my the, the, um, the painting on the camera, sometimes it looks completely different from what I'm doing here. Remember when you're painting like this, look how close you are to this painting. I don't want you to say, oh my God, look, I don't really like this. Look at this. No one's going to look at your painting that close. Look at it from across the room. Hold it back. Step back from your painting or your easel every now and then. Leave it alone for a day or so and barely look at it and you will probably love it when you come back. If there's something wonky and something bothering you, a good trick is to take a photograph of it or hold it up in a mirror. And it's amazing that sometimes it will just, you will just see like what the, what the issue is right off the bat. And I don't really need to go back. It's wet. The paint is wet. I know there's a little glare. And if I wanted to, I could dry off my brush and go back with just my dry brush and really soften areas. I like the darks and lights. I am, and I and I noticed now just because of looking at it on the camera, not so much here, is I do want to soften it a teensy bit. And when I do that, I don't want a big brush load of paint. I don't want it this wet. I just dry it off. I'm not washing it. I'm not putting it in my water. I'm just drying it off. And I'm just finessing it a little bit, just a little smoother. Okay, that's it. How easy is that sky? What did it take us? About 11 minutes. So anyway, you see how quick and easy it is. And I can see some of your comments here, please. You guys who are just joining in, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I want to be able to make sure that you guys can hear me and that I can see all your, um, your comments. Okay, so... I'm gonna to go to a darker color down here, our dark greens and to some light greens. I'm not even gonna wash this brush off. I am just going to dry it off since I'm going into a darker color. Lots of times, as a lot of you guys might know, is I paint dark to light. I love starting very dark, darker than you really would expect to, and get a little medium shade and a little lighter and a little lighter. And when you get that last light color and you have that dark in the background, boy, things just pop. So I'm gonna go a little dark on my background here. And you might think, oh, it's very dark, it looks black. We're gonna build it up slowly. I'm gonna start with my big brush. So again, you can start with any of your bigger brushes. I'm going to sort of bring my grasses up a little bit. I don't wanna have a straight line across there. So let's just go in. I've got my phthalo green. Like I said, that was kind of a bluish green. You can use whatever dark green you have. I was out shopping today and I wanted to pick up some colors that in case you didn't find, I buy these in the big, big uh, half gallons, but the Deco Art brand I do like, and they've got a Hunter, a Hauser dark green, and that's a nice dark green. They also had, I was looking at the blue so I could get you something comparable to what I'm using, and I use a phthalo blue, but this primary blue is really a nice one. Ultramarine works. Ultramarine was a little lighter than this, so if you have a choice, primary blue would be great. Hey, Gina. Uh, see, the sky looks great, right? I think so too, but it took like 10 minutes. So sometimes spending a lot of time and being super duper careful and stressing out and trying to get it exact, 
it's not really much fun. I'd rather have fun doing it, slapping the paint on and just see what comes out. Okay, grasses. I'm gonna start dark, so I'm going to use just the tiniest bit of black. I apologize for that uh, glare. And I'm gonna go right into my green. I'm going to do my edges again, and that's a little clue like, oh, what if it's actually too dark? But I like something, it's a little black green, but you can still see that it's green. Do my edge just to get that on there, finished, and gives me a little practice to mix up that color to make sure I'm getting it the shade I want. And I'm working flat on a table here. That makes it easy for you guys to see. Although I work flat a lot, you can certainly work at an easel. If I'm doing huge, big paintings, I'll have them on the easel. But some, and if I'm outdoors doing plein air work, I'm of course on an easel. But sometimes when I'm just working here at the table with some smaller paintings, I tend to just work flat like this. Although I'm always lifting it up, turning it sideways, upside down. Okay, so I'm using this dark green, and just like what when we were you know, doing darks and lights. I don't wanna go into white with this dark green because I will end up with mint and we don't want that. But you can always add a little more green as you go here and there. I don't wanna to get too light yet, but I like the variation of some lights and darks. This is gonna have so many little uh, grasses on top. We're not gonna really see much variation because it's gonna be buried under all of our, our grasses. But still, I like to just mix it up, just some lights, some darks and just work my way from the left over to the right. I don't have to worry about getting a nice line here. I want it to be a little bit uneven and wonky because we're gonna bring a lot of grasses up after. So you can almost make that uneven as you go. You can even use the brush to bring up some little grasses to start. I'm kind of doing that more on the chisel edge. I'm applying the paint with the flat end of the brush but when I'm doing some grasses, I'm gonna have a chisel edge like that. All right. And I may be giving this a little shot with the hairdryer to get it to dry a little faster. We'll see how that works. How's everybody doing tonight? What are you guys all painting these days? I'm still on a little bit of a summer kick, but I my brain is all about fall, so I am gonna jump in and start doing some fall and Christmas things soon. I don't know how many of you guys follow me, but um, afterwards, or maybe while I'm waiting for something to dry, I'll pull out some things I've been working on and show you. You can find on my Tinker's Cart art page, you can find some videos, tutorials, little tri tricks and tips. I also have a YouTube page, which you'll find some longer classes there. It's Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Hughes, that's me, Cheryl Hughes, but it's Tinker's Cart Art on YouTube, on Facebook. If you want to join my group on Facebook, it's called Learn to Paint with Cheryl. We do a little bit more with classes and things and some little shorts there. And you're welcome to follow me on all of the social media. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to put this on and I'm going to tell you, I do have a new app and you guys are going to kill me. I have my new app to text you when I'm going live. And you know what I did is I went live and I did not text you guys a reminder. I'm so bad. And I can't do it now that my phone's all hooked up. So I apologize. All this techie stuff is a little new to me, but I am getting a handle on it. And if anyone misses it, and you wouldn't really know that if you're here, but if you see it later, I will be better about texting. And let me just put it up on the screen for a sec. So you will have that number. If you want to get some text notifications when I go live like this, and I promise I will start actually sending them, you can text me at this number, 978-315-5650. Um, if you text that, opt in. I'm not going to bug you with lots of things, but I will at least send you a little notification when I'm actually going live. And so that's what I want for the bottom. I know it looks super messy and kind of, you know, not great, but let's let that dry. And it's a good base for the background because we're going to, like I said, go on with all our grasses there. I'm done with this big brush now, so I'm going to just rinse that out. Um, these big brushes I will tend to use if I'm going into a darker color, I'll, I'll hang on to it. They're pretty sturdy. But when you're painting with your little acrylics, Synthetic brushes, be sure, to, be sure to rinse them out after you are done with them for each color. Even if you think you're going to go back to it in a little while, in the meantime, the paint will dry in the ferrule and you'll start um, losing 
uh, hairs and, and they'll get all wonky and they won't have a nice chisel edge for you or a nice tip when you need them. I'm shutting this off now because it's annoying, but at least you can um, jot that number down and if you need me to repeat it later, I can do that. Um, yeah, so rinse off your little brushes because these guys aren't expensive brushes, but they'll last a long while if you take care of them. If you have some brushes that are all crazy with hair all over the place and whatnot, you can revive them a little bit. You can bring them back. You just need to like take some boiling water or some really hot water, dip it in, um, and it sometimes will reshape for you. And when you're done and you wash your brushes out, you can use Dawn or Ivory Soap. You can, like Ivory Soap is good too because you can run your, your uh, brush back and forth and you see all the paint that comes out when you thought you had it clean. And then you can just leave some soap on there and kind of shape it and it will it will be a good, it'll, your brushes will thank you. Okay, now this is pretty wet. So I'm gonna apologize for the noise that the heat gun makes. I'm gonna dry it up so that you're all not having to hang and wait. Um, so let me just give that a little, little hit with the dryer. It's not too bad, but it is a little bit noisy. All right, so like I said, we're going to work on our two little dragonflies, but you can do as many as you like. It doesn't have to just be two. We're going to work on those now. I put them, I will show you the original. I just put them kind of almost a little off center. I don't like anything smack dab in the middle. And they're very simple if you want to sketch them. All they are, and I've got a little bit of green on my canvas there. Let me just, if you have a little boo-boo like that, you get a little paint where it shouldn't be. If it's wet still, you can just take a brush wet with water, wipe it off. If not, you can wipe it with a paper towel. If it's really stubborn, but on something you really want to get it off of, rubbing alcohol is a, a good little thing that will get some of that paint off for you. Okay. Oh, sketching on. So I'm just going to sketch on. Really, for those guys, you're just going to sketch a little circle for the head and a little line for the body. It's really not much. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. It's just a little circle and a little body. And then the wings are just like an M almost or a little heart shape. You see? It looks like a stick figure now, but that's how I start them. Okay, so we've got two dragonflies on there that look kind of crazy, but they are dragonflies. And like I said, you could put some little ones around there if you want to have a whole field of them. You could do that, but I'm going to put two on for now. And what I start with is their wings. And here is a little trick. Taking just my little round, um, my little round detail brush. It's funny, I have all these brushes, but of course I have the few favorites that I always use. And I'm going to just take a little white. I, I rinsed my brush with some water because I want to put on the wings so they're almost see-through. So how I'm doing this, I'm taking a tiny bit of white paint over here. And I'm going to add a bit of water. I want it more watercolory. I want it to be transparent. I don't want it to run off the page, but this is lying flat. So it's very, very, very thin. And I'm going to just, don't worry about the chalk lines. I'm just filling in the wings. The paint's really loose. I'm going to do all of the wings and then I'll show you my little technique. I might wipe some of that paint off, but you can see how very thin that paint is. And because it's so thin, it's going to stay wet for a while. I don't have any worry about that drying too fast. And I'm just, just filling in those two little um, almond shapes, I guess you'd call them. And the chalk is great because once this is all dry, you can just wet your finger and just wipe off those chalk lines. So if you don't hit them perfectly, I'm not worried right now about filling in my chalk lines perfectly. So what I'm doing now is I've got that on really light to dry off that brush a little bit. I'm going to use that dry brush maybe to drag out some of that paint. It's pretty translucent as it is, but you could take this dry brush and almost pull out some of the paint that's in the center. Dry it off each time because you're picking up paint and just pull some, and I'm leaving it a little heavier around the edge, and I'm just pulling out paint from the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. 
Can you see now it looks a little bit like it's very translucent in the middle, but it's a little heavier on the edge. Let's do this same thing. It's drying, but I'm still able to pull some out. And what would happen if it was dried on you? Just dip into your water, a little clear water, clean water, and you can go back in and take off as much of that as you want. We're going to put some little veins in white over, so don't feel like you've, if you, you've lost too much. You won't know it's a wing. You will. So see, I put it on, really watery, dried my brush off, and just scooped up some paint in the middle. And that will certainly dry quick because it is so watery there. Well, let me put your comments back here. I was... Okay, let me say hi to you guys. Linda, hello, Barb, hey. Do we have somebody above up above with from Michigan too, right? Janice is from Michigan, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Where are we? Pennsylvania, hi, Christine from Pennsylvania. Zena, looking forward to Christmas, but no, I'm not ready to let go for summer either. It's just too short. In New, I'm in New England, and we have had rain for the entire month pretty much of July, so I need some sunshine still. Okay, the body of the dragonfly. I don't tend to like to paint with black too much. If I have to use a black, I will mix it with blue. I will mix it with purple. I just think black, you know, if you're doing a Christmas painting, I mean, no, not Christmas, <laughs> Halloween painting, or there's sometimes when you do need to use black. Hi, Karen. Yeah, of course. Yep, Karen. Um, Karen's one of my Tinker's Cardist members. We have a um, private membership. And we have some of our ladies here tonight. And yes, so all, this is a free class tonight, but I, I stream it into Cardists. I stream it into Tinker's Cart Art. I stream it into Learn to Paint with Cheryl. And it will live there and it will stay in the video section so you can always access it. But within our group, any of my paid classes for Tinker's Cart Art or any of the free classes streamed again right into the group. No charge, extra charge for that group. And... They're organized um, in a library there and very easy to find. Karen, they will be under the guide. This will be under the guide for July as soon as I download it later. So you will find it there. Oh, so back to why I don't like to use black too much. I am going to use kind of like a dark purple body for my dragonflies. They look dark, but they're not really black. They're just a dark purple with a little white highlight. I just am very colorful painter, very whimsical painter. And I just not a gray or black, um, you know, I don't like to use it a lot. So I'm going to make up a purple with just my blue and red. And this makes up a nice dark. I mean, that's pretty dark. It looks blue there to you guys, but it is a very dark purple. I'm using my little liner brush too. Sometimes when we're doing detail like this, you might want to take the tiniest little bit of water to thin your paint out a bit. And how I make these little guys, and I'll come up close so you can see is I just make the little circle for the head. I'm not working and worrying and saying, oh, it's not a perfect circle, I don't really care. And then for the body, I'm using my liner brush, right? Or, or detail brush. I'm gonna press it down a little bit so it's a little wider and see as I'm going along the body, I am lifting that right up off of the page. So I get a nice tapered body. And I like that it's a little bumpy because that's how they would be shaped, they're not perfect. I'm adding a little more water to my dark paint now. It's a little thick. And this guy, he's got quite a long neck, so we are going to shorten that up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a little circle where I want his head. And just watch. I press the brush, press the brush, start pulling it up, pulling it up, pulling it right off the page. So it, it and it's not long enough, but I'd rather have that. I'd rather have it too short and go back than have a big, pushed heavy blob there. So I'm going very light and I'm pulling the paintbrush up off the page. It's not so much that you can't paint a thin line. You know, I hear people say, oh, I can't get a nice thin line. If you have a decent brush, it has a nice point. It's your pressure a lot of the times on the canvas. I have a lot of different things that I paint and I use a lot of pressure and I lift up or I use a chisel edge and I press down and up. If you want to get towards that fine, fine line, just less pressure. Oh, I, look, I'm almost holding my brush like really loosely. You're going to just have a light, light touch and you're going to pull it right off the canvas. So that's a little tip for trying to get some thin lines. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to take some white paint separate now here. It's a little thick because it's been, it's been there on the palette and I'm going to thin down some. I'm going to make these little veins and little dots that I just did as a little decoration, just a little bit of something, something for the wings. 
I did not outline the wings on this, but you could, if your wing looks just transparent all over and you don't have that little darker line around the edge, you could outline the wings. Maybe we'll do that so I can show you what that looks like. So I'm thinning down my paint. I'm gonna use a light, light touch again, and you can use as, as small a brush as you want. Actually, I think I just did little dots on that one, but what I do on a lot of my dragonflies is I just go in now and I sort of paint some little vein lines. Some little veins. Yeah, just a few on each. I'm not worrying about them like going from one end of the wing to the other. I'm just putting a little on. If you look at some photos of dragonflies or study some you will um, kind of get an idea of how they go, but it, it, no one's gonna look at them and say, oh, that's not the way. I just sort of almost like you're making a leaf, making those little veins. And if you wanna see what outlining looks like, if you wanted to, you could go around your edge. Now, the, the kind of stroke I'm using is very hit or miss. I am not making a perfect line all the way around. I'm putting my brush down, I'm sort of lifting it up. It's almost like I'm stopping and starting. I want it to be very organic and natural. I do like this one outlined a little bit. Okay, I'm same thing on the other end here. It just gives it a little bit more definition And the other thing I do, they have two little antennas. Actually, I did those in the dark color, so let me go back. I should have done those first, maybe. And back to that dark purple I do with their bodies. And their little antennas, I'm using the same kind of stroke I, I was showing you with the pressing down. I press down just the tiniest bit and bring it down. And, and again, it's like two little antennas, little, two little commas almost. Press and press and pull. They do get a little highlight. I give that a second, second, tiny second to dry a little bit. But can you see how I have a little white outline on the back of their body and around their head? Just gives a little highlight. And it's just with the white that we were using. And I'm not going to worry too much about it getting it exactly on him. I would maybe let it dry, but I'm going to put it on to show you. I almost even sometimes I just go a little highlight for the antenna. I'm going over the top of the head and just. And again, I'm kind of wiggling it a little bit so it's not a perfect line, stop and start. And I almost like where it blended in with the purple, so maybe I would, wouldn't mind it when it's wet. It kind of gives it a little blend. Let's see if you can see that now. They look up close there in kind of detail, but they're really not. And then when they're farther away in this field, they just look like little dragonflies with transparent wings. Okay. This is dry here now, and we're going to just put in grasses. The trick for that is to start up here and work down like as, as how something grows like so. I'm gonna start at the top of the grasses and just work down. That way they're gonna all blend nicely. If we did them from here up, we're gonna chop off the tops and it wouldn't look natural. I really like a flat brush on the chisel edge for my grasses. But if you're more comfortable with a liner brush maybe, or detail, whatever works for you. We will be watering the paint a little bit so it's thinner and really does just flow for us. I'm gonna start dark again and work light. So let's do some dark grasses. It's just that black and green we've mixed. I'm going to use this square brush, chisel edge, and I'm just coming up and making some grasses. Let me go a little closer because that looks far away to me. And I'm chisel edge, and I'm just doing these little strokes. I'm sort of, I'm sort of angling them to the right. I might get straighter in the middle and to the left over here. And some can be a little thicker, and some can be thinner. A nice stroke to use is again chisel edge, but press down a little bit, and then as you're coming up, you can lift it off. So I'm getting that really, really thin line because I'm pressing and then I'm lifting it right off the, pa the paper, I mean the canvas, as I go. 
So I'm working into my greens, a little yellow, a little black here. And I'm just doing this first layer. And you can just go any which way you want. Some are long, some are short. Some of you really don't see that well, but we're going to layer a bunch on top with different shades and build up that field nicely. And go right down. So see how I'm doing like almost like a second layer now? These are a little bit right on top of the others. Don't worry about that. You want them to be. They can crisscross over. They could go different directions. Anything would be natural on that sort of a field. And it looks dark, but we're going to, like I said, add some lighter and lighter colors. Um, yellow is very transparent. So what we're going to do when we get down and want a really bright color to pop, the yellow would not show. We're going to mix it with a little white, and you are going to get a nice light green that will really show up well. We'll do some yellow and white and some green and yellow and white. But just work your way down. It looks a little bit like um, <laughs> kind of crazy trees growing in the field, but we're just going to do them as grasses. How is everybody's painting coming along so far? You guys pleased with the technique? And or you might be just watching a little bit tonight. I might even use this little zigzaggy stroke. I do want to get a little bit heavier up here. I don't want it to be, to see that line behind. I'm kind of camouflaging that. Get a little blob there. Get rid of that. And where I'm on these really dark areas, I'm almost going to get a little extra dark. I want a little more black into my green there to get over the dark bits. It'll be fabulous when we get the lights on top of there, though. So you can see how you can use this brush or how a liner brush would work for you, too. Some of them I, are, I am bearing down a little heavier and getting a, some heavier grasses, too. You want, a, you want a variety. You don't want them all the same direction or all the same size or all the same color. What makes it interesting for your eye to look at or your viewer's eye to look at is to have it a little different, have it interesting, have it so that your eye wants to move through the painting and not just look quickly and see a whole, you know, painting of uniform um, lines and patterns and things. You want it to be a little bit more fun. Same colors that I told you I was using before, just the green, a little black, sometimes some yellow. And as soon as I get this bottom layer, I'll pick it up so that you can see it a little closer. And, and then we'll start back at the top with a different shade of green. Okay. Okay. So let me just show you that. I've got a little bit of paint there. So it's, it's, it's getting there. We're building up little by little. And I'm going to just dry off my brush now. I'm not going to wash it because I'm going back into the greens. I just want to get some of that dark off. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to some of this yellow. And a little touch of the green. I want a lighter shade. And I'm doing the same exact strokes. I'm just starting up here and putting a few. Some could start a little further down, some could be a little shorter, some are thicker, some are thinner, some are leaning right or left. It's just going to be a matter of putting layers and layers of these grasses on till we like the look of it. And I'm really trying to get away from being able to see that line, so I'm going to work at that a little bit as we go, pulling some of these light colors over that. Once I get these lights on, I sometimes even go back and cut a few dark ones in too. But let's get this light color first. And I've got like a top layer. Let's kind of work our way down some more. And 
gets too yellow, sometimes I throw a little bit of green back in. And I might start watering it down a little because it is a little heavy. And I have to kind of stand up so you can see where I'm going here. It's hard with it flat in front of me. It really does help to watch it, watch the progression on the camera there. If I pick up too much of the, the dark as I go along, I just kind of just wipe it off on my paper towels. I don't really wash it off in between. Let's see. The bottom row, you're gonna, gonna work right from the edge of that canvas up. Anybody who's just jumping on, fear not. This will be this is recorded, and you can find it on the page after I download this tonight. Well, actually, it'll, it'll be right on the page, but I will download it so I can add it to the media tab under videos. And in our Cardis group, I will put it under the guides. And it's really starting to come together. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of a middle gray, uh, green here. So I've got my yellow. That was a very lime green there. I want to get more of a middle green with some white. And why I'm adding so much white is just because it needs to be a little more opaque to be seen. And if you just joined us, I'm using a flat brush on the chisel edge. I use a little pressure and then I pull it up off of the canvas. I get those nice thin lines. This is really starting to break up that background that was looking a little bit like a line there. And this is all your own preference. Don't struggle trying to make it look like line because my this one is coming out completely different as the one I did previously. Even I can't do them the same two times. As long as you like the way it looks and more importantly had fun painting it, the joy that you get from painting will certainly show through to your finished painting. If you've struggled and fussed and worried about tiny little insignificant details, your painting will look overworked and I'd rather look at something that looks like it was really fun. Just throw the paint on there. All right, it's coming along. I can kind of see I'm building up all those little, all those little lines. I'm gonna get lighter now. I'm gonna try to hold that in angle so you can not have to try to see through that glare. Can you see I'm really just kind of going this way and that? This is much lighter green. I took that green we were just using, added a little more white to it. And I'm going to work my way down to the bottom, just like I've been doing. I'm going to cut a few darks in there again at the end. Something that you don't like, just take your little brush and go right over that area. Wait, do you see how easy and quick those flowers are on there um, on the field too? They're very quick, sort of one-stroke flowers almost. And there's something that once you learn and practice them, you could do them in all sorts of still lifes or landscape paintings if you have some flowers or roses that you want to paint. They make cool beach roses if you want to do something like a beach scene. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to rinse off my brush now and just go a little darker. Just cut a few of those darks in. Oh, hey, Coleman. How are you? I know you're in our virtual art retreat group, which is so much fun. Aren't you enjoying it? Some friends of mine and myself have an art um, retreat going on for the month of July where everybody in that we've all paint differently or do different sorts of things. We all post videos and I'm actually going to go live in there on Saturday to paint the Tree of Life painting, which I don't think is behind me. Um, 
but the group wraps up now this weekend, but we're going to do a fall one. So we're pretty excited. We'll tell you all about that too. So, Oh, Lynn, what's the matter? You having trouble with it? Let it dry a little bit, maybe. And then put some of your strokes on top. If they're sort of starting to all mush together and, and, and just not, and getting more muddy than your lights and darks, let it dry or, or hit it with the hair dryer. And then if it looks too dark, you can start with just some light ones. And if you want to at any point, like uh, send me a private message, me photos and I'll critique and help you along with it that way. So I, I will try to make it as easy as I can for you. Um, but don't get upset. Just kind of go with it. Let it dry a little bit and we can work on it again. You know, if you send me some pictures later. Tall grass on the edge of a large meadow. Yeah, it's kind of looking to me like the heron that we painted in the Cardis group. This was sort of how we did the grass. And I was really, I really liked the way that came in. Oh, Coleman, don't worry that it's running out because we're doing it again. We're going to do a fall one. I forget when did, did we decide on a date. We're doing the fall one probably the probably in September. So keep tuned. We are all going to come on and we will have we had to blast. We'll keep doing little groups like that. So don't worry. Okay. I was gonna put some darks in. I'm going back to the colors I used. Sometimes you can even add a little blue to your green if you want something dark, but not quite with the black. Paint's a little thicker, so I'm adding a little water right now. And this is just because, can you look from the camera that you see, it's very light in the background here, which I like, but it's too uniform back there. So I wanna break that up with some darks. You can tell I'm from New England and Masters is darks, some darks. I'm gonna put some darks in there now. I really don't think I talk like that, but I do. So that's going to break up a little bit of what I'm seeing as a stripe across there. I don't see it so much when I'm up close, but I see it when I back off. So I want to just kind of get a little dimension there. And, you know, I can't worry about it too much because all these flowers and little doodads on top, you know, I was going to even look and say, oh, I see the line through and it's light. So I'm going to leave it go because I'm I'm fussing with it too much. And I'm telling, I'm doing what I'm telling you not to do. I'm going to let it dry a minute. Um, these guys are all dry now, so I can just like wet my finger and get rid of my chalk lines if you want. And let me hit that with the, with the heat gun for a sec. And we can start those flowers. Pretty dry, it's not too wet, but I don't want to drag any of the greens and blacks into my roses or my white little daisies. All right. Now, I'm going to get another little palette up here because I've mixed I put, I put way too much color out, and I say this every time, and I say, I'm not going to do that next time. I'm going to put a little out. Then I put a little out, and I say, that's not nearly enough. But look at how much I have here. We could paint five of these paintings. But I'm going to, um, just so I don't get that red in with any of the darker colors, because the red and the white is what I'm going to use to make these little spiral roses. And I am going to use just, this is just a little bristle brush like I showed you earlier, but it's a small one. But you could use whatever you have um, for these. I'm pulling this red over here so I don't get it all different colors. I'm going to pull it over here. And I don't really even plan out where these roses are going. Talks of the darks. <laughs> yeah. I just plunk my brush where I want one. And I spiral out like this. It's basically as easy as that. I'm not painting a circle. I'm spiraling out so that... I get a really soft, loose edge there. Can you see it's just kind of like dry brushed and smudged on the end. You can vary them up. Some could be little. I want them dark like that to start. And then some could be bigger. Space them out so that you have room to put those little like loop in little purple flowers in, in there too. Oh, I lost my camera. Hang on, you guys. I don't know. Sometimes it, that happens. Hang on. I'll get you back for that one. Just give me a sec because you do want to see what I'm painting and not me. You know what it is, is um, I have it on Do Not Disturb, but sometimes if a text or something comes through, I don't know why, it just kind of does that. But let's get you back online here. I'm going to take a second, so no worries. 
I don't think you missed much. Mute that so it's not echoey. Oop. Into the studio. And let me get you not upside down. It's not a paint night unless I'm upside down at some point. Okay, there you don't need me. There you go. Okay, so you can see it. Okay, and they're very dark and they're maroony, and that's what I want to start. We'll brighten them up with some bright pink. Again, my whole thing about start real dark and get the light colors, and they really will pop. Once these are all done, I may put some little light leaves here too, uh, grasses, but we'll see. So really, it's as simple as, see the brush is pretty up and down, pretty straight on. Plunk it, circle. This is how I do some of my suns and my moons a lot of times. Can you see that loose little bit around the edge? There's a lot of paint in the brush to start. Not a lot, but a, a brush full. Plunk it down, and you're using all that paint up. So when you get out to the edge, you do have that nice feathery light bit. Over here, same thing. And I want to work um, the white into this a little bit while it's still wet. So I am going to start going a little quicker because I want it to be wet when I'm putting my lights on for the first step anyway. And don't forget, you can really have some little ones too. I'm going to leave this little corner for some of the lupins. All right. I'm not going to wash my brush off. I'm just going to dry it on a paper towel. I'm going to go right into my white. And take, you know, I'm taking some of that off. So I've kind of taken a little bit off. Same exact stroke. Plunk it right in the middle on top of the wet, uh, wet red paint. And circle. I'm trying to not get it so tightly wound that you don't see these lights in there. A little bit of uh, white. I'm reloading after every flower. Putting it in the middle, spiraling out, but leaving a little of the dark showing. It's almost like a little pinwheel and the paint's drying but it's still wet enough to get that look that I'm looking for plunk it down brushes straight up and down circle and now you're going with this white paint right over the edge of where you ended with the red and it really even gives a nice little feathery uh, pink edge and that one blended quite a bit so I'm going to go with a little bit more white and just kind of go a little bit on top of it a little bit And like I said, I'm just not drying the brush off each time, but I am getting fresh white. And sometimes I go really quite far out over what I have there. I do want to see a little of that dark behind, though. So you can see how I kind of left a little bit of the, when I'm spiraling, I'm skipping out a little bit and leaving little lines of that dark. You can see a couple of them got really too light, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I don't mind it. I don't mind some light and dark. But if you did get a, you know, like a big white blob, kind of like this one even, maybe. You can always go back in after with some dark if you need to. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to rinse off my brush now. And I am going to let that dry a second. I do go over now with a little liner brush and make some little spirals on top. But I want you to be able to see it, so I'm going to let the paint set just a little bit. And these little lupin flowers, they're just kind of uh, done with brush strokes, and I'll show you what that is. I'm going to go with maybe just a little square brush, kind of the shape of those petals. You could use a round, whatever works. I think I have a, a square one that's about the size I want. So I'm using this little square one here. Where is it? There it is. Very dark purple to start again. And that's we're going back and getting the mix we made with just the primary. Um, primary red and blue, and that gives you a nice dark purple. I'm going to mix up a little more. So these little um, shapes, I start with a little stroke for the for the loop in, say, and then I kind of do a little V. So they're just going to get a little wider as they come. So I do one stroke, a couple in the middle, one to the edge. I know they're very dark, but that's okay. And I'm going to do a few. I'm going to start again here like a little v stroke and then maybe three strokes and then i don't mind that to some of the grass is showing through in the back i don't want it too too solid and it just gets a little wider as it goes lots of times i tuck them in behind a flower now i want to be able to put some white on there as um 
while it's wet. So if you feel like it's drying too fast, just do a few of these and then we'll go right over with the white. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm not gonna wash it, but I'm just gonna dry it off on my paper towel. Take up a little white. My white is pretty blue, I guess. Let me just pull some over there. So just white now on top of this blue, purple while it's wet. So I know it looks black to you, but once we get the white on there, you're gonna see it starts to get purple. I'm gonna do another one and show you the exact strokes. But you can see I'm just going on there with white. It's picking up the purple because it's wet. So I do wipe it off sometimes on my paper towel and get fresh white. So here's the strokes we're gonna use, whether you're using a flat brush or a round. I'm gonna go back on top of that one. It's like a pine cone. So the little one here, I just, I'm just going right over it. And then I'm just kind of not trying to line it up perfectly with the strokes, but can you see I'm doing it like right, left, middle. I just find it's getting too purple. So I'm going back and just getting some more white. Same thing. So right over the first one, then over the sides. And then these brushes strokes here are really defining those petals. So even if there's one or two here, you can make as many as you want when you go over here. You can just put one here, one petal here. But I'm not worried about saying, oh, wait, this is my first stroke. Oh, that was my second. I'm just going right over it and just making these strokes. And in just a couple of strokes, you have a little purple, like a loop in or a little, some sort of a little long flower there. But you can see the paint was starting to, to get almost too white. So that's why I'm only going to do a handful of those purple flowers based in. And then I'm going to go and do the white and then back and forth. And can you see how these are getting darker as they dry? Sometimes when the paint dries, it sort of just sinks into the canvas and doesn't have that pop like it did. So we're going to go over that with a little pink again and then some little lines. But let's get the uh, some more of these purple flowers. And these, are, I made, and like, like I said, my first one to second one completely looks different. There's no way you can get them exact. This is more, they're, these are more pine cone looking. I think I might, um, well, I like it that they're a little different. They're a little big, so I want to make some smaller ones too. So let me just kind of pop one in here. And I, I think that I'm getting a little different shape now because instead of using this flat brush flat, I'm going to try some with kind of using it on the chisel edge. And as I am working, I notice I'm getting very pinky there. So I'm going to add a little more blue. And I'm just making those little, from the top to the bottom, those little strokes. This one is very blue, but that's okay. I want them to vary a little bit. And like I said, if you want, I'm just freehanding them. You could take your little chalk and kind of eyeball where you might want them if you think that would be helpful to you. I'm going to see these different shades because this little guy is very pink. This little one is going to have more blue. That's kind of a, a cool thing to, to, if you have to think about it even, to make it not all exactly alike. Make them a little different, vary up the colors. Where I'm mixing two colors here, and like I said before, I'm not mixing it so it's a perfect pile of the certain purple. I'm mixing it on the fly, so some will come out more red, some will come out more blue, and, and, and the result will be it will look more natural. I'm leaning them different ways. You don't want them all pointing up straight or in all one way. Just mix them up a little bit. These guys look a little cut off. I'm gonna maybe add a few petals to them just to kind of lengthen them a little bit. And over here for you, we'll do a little something, something. And now I'm gonna go back and just wipe the color off my brush. I'll scooch back over here so you can, I like to have you see what I'm doing on my messy palettes here too. And then with some of the white, which is very blue again. I think I mixed the white on top of the blue. Let me get some that's a little cleaner. And that way you won't be fighting with the blue color there. There. Same, same kind of thing, same brush, but I am going to try a little bit more on the chisel edge sometimes here. If I pick up too much purple like I am there, I'm going to just take a little fresh white. And let's go here. You see if I'm doing on the chisel edge, it's giving me a little thinner petal. 
it's a little light there because it's dry, but look at this one's gonna be more blue and I like that look. This one is more red. You see how I'm not really worrying about each petal? It's, it's gonna come out more natural looking if I'm not being too precise with it. And these guys in the beginning, it looks a little bit all the same shade. It can always come in here and pop in a few lights if I want to as I go. Or if I've picked up a little of that red on my brush, sometimes popping that on the blue ones is kind of cool. All right, this one last little guy, and then I was kind of eyeball them, see if they need anything else. I saw that this was getting a little too blue. So I just went in and put some whites on top of it. You can get some lights if you need them, if they look too monotone. Anyway, all right, I think that looks okay. Oh, I forgot my little last layer I put here at the end. And same thing here. I know it's glary sometimes with this. And I think some of them that are just kind of hanging out here and up behind a rose, I will give them a stem and maybe some grasses around them so they're not just hovering there in the in the middle of the field. Okay, so I want to go back with this a little bit and get a little bit pink in there because as it's dried now, it looks a little bit too maroon and dark for me. And I'm going to take a little bit of red and white here, just getting a very light pink. I'm really getting it watery. Look how much water I'm adding to that. I really want it thinned down nicely because I want to put a little spiral in there and I want it to flow nice and I don't want it to be dragging. I want it to be a nice little spiral. I'm using that same kind of a stroke as before. I'm just with that little round detail brush, I'm poking it right in the center and very light touch, and I'm circling and circling and circling. Looks like a rose kind of, right? And the trick is a brush with a fine tip. Doesn't have to be a thin brush as long as the tip is fine and really keep it watered down. Sometimes I'll go back and add water to my paint after each time. Now, it helps to set your hand down a little bit to do this, so I'm being very careful because I have a lot of wet things here, but let me go closer so you guys can see it a little bit. So I'll just press it down. This one you mightn't see too much because that is very light. So let me go to one of the darker ones to start. Pressing the brush down in the middle and spiraling right out, 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 out. Where that little bugger is very light, I think it needs to be darker. So I'm going to go and get the dark red. Same technique, same brush. I'm just going to thin it down a little bit. And because it's so dark, I'm doing the same stroke, but I'm going in with a light. I mean with a dark color. See how that helps that and this little guy too it's very light washed out if i went with my light pink it would look the same so i'm going to go in with that dark and do a little bit of a spiral with that okay the others are going to go back to the light that i had i might even add more white because i really want it to pop up so it's very very light now and i'm going to rest my hand here press down and then just spiral do not worry that the line's not perfect. It is fraying out and it's getting a little feathery and that's the look I want. So you don't have to try to be perfect. And I like to even go right, like way out over the edge sometimes. This is a super quick and easy flower. Um, you can use it, like I said, in a lot of instances, it'll be fun. I like to make them sort of loose and not tight. So as you can see when I'm spiraling these, sometimes I'm going right over some of the other flowers. I'm not worried about, you know, keeping it contained. I'm going to just really spiral that right out. And like I said, this is fun for beach rolls. You could do a fun as a beach rose. These ones I put a little dark in. I'm going to go over now with a little light. And sometimes it does sink in a little bit. So if you feel like you have to go back and add it a little brighter, multiple layers of these spirals some of them are looking still not as bright as i'd like so i'm using just white now thin down if i want to pop it into 
another one. I could use a little more pressure to get it to. I kind of like the look of that with the pink spiral and then go back with some white. It's really doing what I want it to. It's really popping out there. It's per personal preference. Look at it and go darker or lighter or not at all and just leave it. Okay, cool. Let me give you a close-up view of those guys. So it is just little spirally flowers that appear to be roses when you step back from them. Thank you, Gina. It is, it, yeah, it's a pretty simple painting, but it does come out nice. Here's a little one stroke flower that you can use for the little daisy like flowers. And I would go with a little flat brush again. If you only have a round, you can use that. These are just going to be white, so I'll pull that white over. And I'm just going to make little one stroke flowers. So I start at the edge of the petal, I just kind of press and pull in. I'm going from the outside to the inside. Now, these, and I actually just do the center too because yellow is so transparent. Just put a little white in that center so that when we do the yellow centers, they'll, you'll be able to see them. So sometimes it's just a little bit of some petals peeking out behind something. This is where I look, and wherever I have some space left is where I put these guys. So you could just sort of press the brush down and pull in if you want just to get a wider petal and then it gets a little thinner to the middle, but we are going to touch that in with the white for that center. And if it's just a little bit of room, you just kind of put some of these little guys in. I love the little ones peeking out, which can go any way you want. So you can use that brush on the chisel edge if you want. You can use it flat out if you want that shape flower. I should do it so you can see it, not over here outside of the camera. But it is always outside in. You don't want to start at the center and push your petal out. And it's always pressing, press down, and then I lift up a little bit to get a little bit of a thinner, more almondy shaped petal. And it's wherever you want them. Wherever I see a little space, you don't want to go overboard, but sometimes the more the merrier on something like this, right? Um, I had some that are closer to the bottom. I'm gonna forget, remember to put my centers as I go. And put some peeking out too. And now it's the matter of when to stop, when to step away. It's a little spot you don't like put a little flower over it. Okay, I'm pretty much there, but yet I keep going. Okay, one more, one more, one more. Okay, get my centers. And I'll show you um, how that white in the middle really helps because, I just kind of forgot, but let me go back and touch that white in the middle there. Okay, because look at, if you are going to go with just your yellow paint, and try to do a, a flower or a center, look at, you don't even see it. You don't even see it. It's it's just too transparent. The minute you add some white to it or white underneath it, it will pop. So let's just go in with our yellow now. And if you pop it in there, now where you have a center, can you see how much brighter it would be? I am just popping it in the center. I am not worried about what it, what it perfectly you know, round center or anything I have. I'm just laying it in the middle. If I missed a center for the white, yeah, sometimes it's okay, but like that one, I'll just dab it in there kind of heavy. And then we'll step back and look and see if this needs anything at all still. Okay, well, that's basically it. I am going to take a look though and see if I need any, I don't think I do really, if I need any more stems. I think I will take a very light green and any of those lupin flowers that might need a stem, I could put it in now. I want it to be like a, a lightish green. If, you know, if I needed to, you know, sometimes I just from behind, you wouldn't hardly see it, but it just, 
here's another dimension. And I think that's good. I think that's all I do. You could add a few little strokes if you think if you're very dark, say, and you want to lighten it up, you're going to have to add yellow and some white if you want to put a few strokes in there because they're not going to show up unless you really get some white in there. And let's see. So if you want to, too, I've got the smaller brush now, but you could throw in a few very light. If you find that your background is just too dark, throw in some lights here and there. Not sure this needed it, but I want to show you just some ways to correct it if you think, you know, this if it's too light. If it's um too light, you could just slip in some darks like I was doing there. But anyhow, that is what we have. What do you guys think? It's a smaller version of the big one. And as you can see, even myself doing two paintings, they are fairly different. And if you have any questions at all as you are painting, you could put them on this post, but you can also just send me a, a message too if you'd like. That's that's. I'm always around, I'm always checking. I was gonna show you, oh, did you guys see when I painted the baseball cap the other day? It was so amazingly um, quick and easy and fun and I had no intention, I just, happened to uh, see some painted hats and I thought, geez, I'm gonna try that, I have a black hat. And I'm loving the way the sunflowers come out. I mean, this looks pretty complicated, but go back and did I put it on the page yet? If it's not on the page, I'll put it on. You should see how quick these guys are to do. And you could do the same thing with a, with a hat and just use these, put some grasses and do some flowers. You could put a couple dragonflies, so fun. Ordinary acrylic paint, you don't need any special fabric paint um, they do have fabric paint and they have extenders and all that business, but if you want to just use your acrylic paint, it's the same thing um, on fabric. So I did pick up, this is going to be kind of fun. Here's my, I have a couple ideas. I'm going to show them to you real quick if you have a second. Um, I bought some little baby onesies. So what I do is I paint on t-shirts or something like this is I will cut out a piece of cardboard, slip the shirt over it so it's a little stretched and it has that um, stiff uh, backing to paint on. But I'm going to, I think, you guys have been loving the giraffe, right? I think I'm going to paint the giraffe on the red one. And wouldn't it be cute if, it, if the little onesie was tucked into the pants and then the big giraffe head came out? And I think I'm going to paint the hippo on the, on the blue one. So that's a project I've got lined up. I've got some fabric tote bags. Now I'm on a little kick of fabric painting. Um, so watch for those. I'm going to get a minute and paint those too, and you can see it. But... Take a look for that uh, sunflower one. I believe it's on YouTube, too, but if it's not on the pages, I'll make sure. On the pages, you can usually find the videos under the video tab, which is under the media tab. It will say photos, albums, videos. Um, the videos usually live there um, for you to rewatch. And if you are not um, on my email list, I usually will email some of these things out to you, too. Top of the Tinker's Cart art page, there's a sign up button if you sign up there for, for my um, email. All right, I'm going to let you guys go because I don't want to keep you all night, but it was a fun, quick project. Thank you for watching. Hi, Sandy. Oh, yeah, let me know how it comes out. I'd love to see it. So, um, you guys have been great to pop in and watch. I appreciate it. And uh, any questions, send me a message. So, I'm going to say good night. Have a wonderful night, and I will see you guys soon. Okay, good night. Bye.